Hi, Dr. Teresa Lyons here, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And this week's Ask Dr. Lyons question is, what effect does paternal age have on genetic mutations in autism? It's estimated that about a thousand genes are involved in autism. I have several videos on genes and autism. So if this sounds like new information for you, then definitely check out some of my other videos. With a thousand genes being involved in autism, that means that no one gene is likely to explain more than 1% of cases. And there has been established a relationship between advanced paternal age and increased autism risk. And this has been found in several studies. So this video, I'm gonna go into that aspect of genetics a little bit more. So let's talk about paternal mutations. So we'll start off with de novo mutations. And if you're not 100% sure what de novo mutations are, please check out some of my other genetic videos. I have one that explains the different mutations in detail so that it's really easy to understand what I'm talking about. So with de novo mutations, as well as epigenetics, those two things really explain the relationship between paternal age and genetic mutations in their children. So how do you know? I know that might be what you're thinking. How do they know? De novo mutations present in the sperm or the egg are transmitted to the embryo. Therefore, these mutations are present in all cells within the child. And scientists can easily use technology now to determine the origin. So they can figure out de novo mutations, which ones came from the father and which ones came from the mother. Maternal de novo mutations. Now, most of the de novo mutations found associated with autism originate with the father in an age-dependent manner. That means the older the father is, the more de novo mutations that are there. Scientists calculate that each additional year of paternal age before conception results in two additional de novo mutations in the child. However, it only contributes to about a 10 to 20% increase in autism risk. It's pretty amazing how scientists can quantify for each additional year you can think about a resulting two additional de novo mutations. Again, I wanna stress that this only contributes to about a 10 to 20% increase in autism risk. The number of de novo mutations transmitted from the mother stays relatively consistent throughout the years. So scientists have not found an increase in de novo mutations associated with the increase in mother's age. For the mother, de novo mutations stays relatively consistent throughout the years. Now, one type of mutation that I haven't discussed yet is called a posiotic mutation. Postzygotic mutations, PZMs, are a type of de novo mutation that occurs after fertilization of the egg, and it results in genetically what is referred to as mosaic individual. A mosaic individual is someone who has different genetic information in different cells. So that means if you took cells on one part of the body and analyzed it, you would have some differing genetic information from cells located in another part of the body. PZMs are implicated in several brain disorders, such as epilepsy, cortical malformations, as well as Rett syndrome. Detection of PZMs are tricky, right? Because they're tissue specific. So you would have to take lots of different samples from different areas of the body to really focus in on post mutations, PZMs. So this is more the kind of cutting edge research that scientists are looking at in autism, but it, it's a very tricky area just, just because of how the genetic information changes from cell to cell. So what good is genetics, right? Oh, yeah. It's estimated that about a thousand genes are involved in autism, so that's quite complex. That also means that no one gene is likely to explain more than 1% of cases. But you shouldn't be feeling hopeless now at all. Genetics is complex, but life is not necessarily dictated 
by genetics. The best first step in healing the body is starting the right special diet for your child. So yes, there's a lot of information coming out about genetics and autism, but that doesn't mean that you just throw your hands up and say, ah, I can't do it. Nothing will help. It's not true. The best first step in healing the body starts with finding the right special diet for your child. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, I would love to see you subscribing. And here are some references.